I started singing when I was about seven. Um, like a lot of singers who do what I do, um, I began in a college choir. Um, this was St John's College in Cambridge. And I sang there for six years, and that really is the foundation for everything I do. Without that, I wouldn't be the singer I am. Um, and that kind of that opened my life to performing and standing on stage. And I think when my voice broke, I sort of went through that period of puberty where you look for your, you know, your real voice. I mean, my real voice is my bass voice, but um, falsetto is that kind of thing on top. <laughs> and it came out one day, and it felt okay. And somebody said. That sounds all right, so I pursued it. it. It really was a coincidence that I was bored in a choir rehearsal at school, in a chamber choir rehearsal, and I'd been singing bass and I hadn't had any lessons since my voice had broken. In fact, as a boy I never had any lessons, we learned through, really through osmosis. Um, and I just, fan I just fancy trying out falsetto because the, the, the notes that the outer part were singing were, it was a Bach chorale or something, were really pleasing, it had all suspensions in it. And so I did something and somebody said, oh, sounds alright. And um, <clears throat> at the same time, around the same time, a friend of mine who was head of composition at the school, he gave me a CD of Andres Scholl singing some Bach cantatas and said, oh, you, this guy is new on the scene, you should listen to him. And I remember listening to it and bit by bit sort of got to uh, got to appreciate the, the music and and then it opened a door, I thought what else does he sing? And then that opened the door to sort of handle opera because he just sang Rod Linda at Vinebourne and that was his sort of big, you know, um, big reveal as it were in England. And so I followed that track and, and discovered all the repertoire which I didn't know because I, I was brought up singing choral music. So character tennis for me had just been the second line down in the choir. Um, so I wasn't somebody who was fascinated by the Council of Voice, I wasn't somebody who said I'd want to be James Bowman or do anything like that. And uh, I think that was good because it, it set me on a path of actually having to learn to sing and having to discover how to support the voice over a long period of time. And that's, um, that, took, that took a few years. I wasn't one of these singers who had a natural ability to just produce what I had in my head. Uh, but I knew what I, I could feel in my head, that the sound I wanted to make was there. Um, you just sometimes have to have a bit of patience and trust you know, your, your, le your teacher and your, your lessons. So I'd say when I finished the Royal Academy of Music, it was then that I finally felt, yeah, I, I think I can go away, sing to people, and if there's a problem or something that's challenging, I can work out how to deal with it. And then bit by bit, you build a career on that. So my collaboration with Thomas Dunford began um, during a recording session with an orchestra called Arcangelo, it was conducted by Jonathan Cohen, and he'd engaged Thomas to play the, the lute in the continuous section. And it was actually a, a disc um, of, of operatic arias, so there wasn't really any lute and voice stuff, essentially. But we were in a cab on the way out from there, um, back into town from, from the recording session, and he said to Thomas, he said, you know, you guys should really work together because Lute songs are something that a countertenor should do. And I said, but I don't really have a lute lutenist partner yet. And these things are really organic. You, you don't just, you can just pick up you know, a pianist here or a lutenist there and, and do music. But to make it sort of open up that repertoire to you and make you go, wow, I really get it now. That didn't happen until I met Tom. And we sat down and we played through, and I realized straight away that he was more than a lutenist sitting there playing the music obediently. He's, he's a lutenist in, in Dallas State of the Field much more improvisatory, um, free, inventive, really interested in melody, not just harmony. So often if you go to see a, an orchestra playing, you'll hear Tom quite clearly because he's not necessarily just playing the bass line obediently. Um, he will be um, putting descants here and there and always really, really sensitively. So it, it just seems like he's composing on the spot. So from there I was like, I need to keep working with this guy because he's really good. And I, I love him because he steals the show in all the concerts, so he takes my, the pressure off, you know, and I always like that to be able to... The nice thing about, which you can't do really with a pianist, is have the pianist play stuff in the middle of a song recital that's a bit strange. Um, and often pianists get, uh, you know, uh, they get the, the, the sort of uh, 
bad deal because they're seen as accompanists, but actually they're doing an amazing job. So what I try to do with Tom is to show that he's actually a soloist in his own right. We're going to sing O Solitude by Henry Purcell, which is a song um, set to a uh, text, a uh, translation of a French poem, La Solitude, uh, by a 17th century female uh, writer, Catherine Phillips, who died of the smallpox. And the song really is about the, the, the beauty of solitude, and I suppose to me that relates to the difference between what we call loneliness and solitude. The idea that someone said to me once that solitude is when you are, you can, you sort of can be with yourself, and that, that peacefulness that brings, and the, the chance of, and that loneliness is when you need somebody to hug you and you don't have that person. And they're very different things. It's sort of melancholy in, in both, but it's a different sort of thing. Um, and Purcell, as always, sets this to a, a ground base, which has about just under 30 repetitions. And over that, as usual, he spins this amazing tune, which has so many different um, connotations over the, over, the, um, over the harmony. And uh, it's, you know, to me, I think it's a really well-known song, but actually I sang it the other day in, in an arrangement with the Bar Consul Fretwork. Mm -hmm. And um, Michael Nyman was there because he he'd written some music which we right. which were recording, and he didn't know the piece. And that's amazing for somebody who spent a lot of time with Purcell. And then at another concert, somebody else said, "I didn't know that that song." And I think it's one of Purcell's greatest songs. So hopefully, we'll give you a pretty good rendition of it in our rehearsal time. <laughs>
because it's me.